Welcome to the Intentional Randomness Podcast with your host, Omo Babala Adetoji, a.k.a. Bobby. On this show, we're intentional about everything. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Intentional Randomness. Yeah, I know it's been a while, but um, I trust you're all doing well. Um, it's summer here in Sweden, so I've just been prioritizing rest and spending time with my family. But yeah, today I'm back on the show with some, with two amazing friends, and we're here to discuss something totally different from what we've been talking about in the last few weeks. But I just feel like this is a good one. I recently met someone who uh, moved to Sweden newly, and I was like, oh, I should really sit down with her and talk. And then I had another friend that we've been talking about this whole moving and the dynamics of moving from, let's say, um, an African country to Europe or moving, just generally moving. So today on the show, um, I'm going to be talking to Damilola and Peter Seth on moving from Africa to Europe. And I say Africa to be specific. This is, I think the African experience is different. So when you move to a new continent, it's a totally different experience than maybe when you move within Europe or you move within some other um, countries or if you moved within North America. So that's why we're specifically today talking about moving from Africa here, specifically moving from Nigeria to Sweden and how that experience is different. Yeah. So I just want to welcome Peter and Dami. Welcome to Intentional Randomness. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yeah. So as someone who grew up in Nigeria myself, and um, I've lived now in three different countries, this topic is very close to my heart and very dear to me because I feel that a lot of times when we are back in, like when I was back in Nigeria, I had a totally different expectation of, of what life would be in Europe. Or maybe I didn't even think so much about it. And then moving here was totally different. So um, this topic is something that I hope um the the audience out there will find interesting yes <laughs> let's get into it so tell me about your experience when you were in nigeria and when did you start first thinking okay maybe one day i'll leave this country i remember for me it was very early on in uh, i think i was still in secondary school maybe just as when i started thinking one day i'm not going to be in this country and my mom used to laugh at me like where are you going <laughs> so i don't know if it was like that for you guys um, okay, for me, um, I think leaving the country from the onset, like, I mean, Babola, Babola's experience, um, I've also lived in several countries, um, and for me, um, growing up secondary school, my brother studied abroad, so it was okay. like automatic for me to also study abroad, so I expected that, but then, mm. I think our generation back then, for some reason for those of us that, that study in the uk a lot of us still had you know hope in the nigerian dream and yeah. um we wanted to go back home to you know put into practice what we had learned abroad and you know hoping to make a difference yeah, and we wanted to be good citizens <laughs> exactly you know <laughs> and then i mean as life goes on you know you get married and you know, you are just in search of a better life. When I got married, my husband was working with the um, with the government um, parasitical, and obviously the pay wasn't that great, and you know the politics and everything. So mm-hmm. he just started throwing his CVs out there, and you know, and then Ghana came up. I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, it wasn't like we're thinking of leaving the country entirely, but I mean. It's a better opportunity, better pay, and mm. you know the benefits that came with it was awesome. And for me at the time, I was working in a company that had branches in um, Ghana, so it was just mm. easy for me to ask for a transfer. And then mm. to join my husband about four months, five months after he moved. Mm. So that was it. And then you know we're living our life in Ghana. You know I tell people that in Ghana, like once. I mean, Ghana, there's, the security is re- is relatively safer in Ghana than Nigeria. There's electricity. So, I mean, those two things alone would make you feel comfortable. Mm. 
you know so we weren't really thinking about okay maybe where's the next place we're going to let's move abroad and until we started having a discussion with one of my husband's cousins and was like oh i've done ielts that's for canada Hmm. that's oh since my husband is an it person he would qualify in fact would get it easily Hmm. so that was when we started thinking about okay maybe this is not so much of a bad idea let's give it a try Hmm. (laughs) so that was where the journey started so wow we put all our efforts in canada you know writing between both of us <laughs> maybe english is not our language <laughs> <laughs> but we, we wrote ielts like so many times or we it couldn't get us like the points we needed wow you know, mm. to so yeah it just got to a point i just told my husband i'm like see we're okay in ghana like i mean going to canada you know you also know when you start having kids, your perspective also changes. Mm, because changes you look that's at, true. You will look at your kids and then what you have to offer. Now you mm. have a job in Ghana. What happens if you don't have that job anymore? Mm. Is it easy, it to that easier for you to get another job in Ghana or you have to go back to Nigeria? And mm. for us, that wasn't really an option. As in, it wasn't something we're too keen on. Because obviously, mm. we're going to have to um, trade off things like security and um, electricity. electricity. <laughs> I mean, people come to visit me in Ghana and they look at my house. There's no security, man. I'm like, yes, you don't have a generator. I'm like, yes, why do I need a generator? Because they don't take light in Ghana. Even if they do, it's mm. just for 20 so it was, Even and, Ghana was a different experience for Oh, you. yes. You know? Okay. So we just weighed the options and, you know... When um, Canada wasn't working, I just told my husband, I was like, you know what, free this thing. Like, we are not doing the game. Uh-uh. We are spending money to write IELTS exams how many times and it's not working. So let's just leave it, you know. Mm. But I get, and I told my husband, I'm like, if you're meant to leave Africa, that God will just do it one way or the other. It's just. Mm. So, so God mm. wanted you in Sweden then? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, because I mean, Sweden never really crossed our minds. Like that, apart from the fact that my husband's um, office HQ is in Sweden, but mm. I mean, we never really thought in that direction. So, isn't it funny that a lot of times Sweden doesn't really, is not really the first on people's list, is it? As in, it never even came. If I were doing Australia and Canada at the same time, wow, you know? I was gonna ask Peter, was Sweden on your list at any point, <laughs> or you also found yourself here? <laughs> Oh, well, uh, for me, uh, I had four countries in mind. Unfortunately, wow. uh, well, fortunately, unfortunately, Canada wasn't amongst them. The U.S. Oh, wasn't that's amongst rare. them. Wow. The, UK, the U.K. was, I just wanted somewhere that would be not too much of a hassle, you know, <laughs> to move. Or oh, were you looking for a country where there were not too many Nigerians? <laughs> not, not necessarily. I, I just didn't care about the population i mean i just wanted mm. to have peace of mind and so mm. the four countries that i i was targeting or i had my focus set on was uh germany sweden netherlands and hungary surprisingly wow yeah wow that's, that's a very that's very weird, weird <laughs> list of countries you want to go to I i'm know. actually very surprised hungary yeah. netherlands sweden and sweden. germany as in I can think of Germany because a lot of Nigerians move to Germany. I can say Netherlands, but Sweden and Hungary usually don't make the list of the countries list, that people want yeah. to go. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Dami, I have to say this, Dami has an Instagram page that she started just based on her experience of moving yes. here. And I remember la- yesterday, was it yesterday, you had this question about the five most, um, the five countries that people move to most and uh, yes. Nigerians move to most and the, the least countries. That's very interesting. <laughs> yes so, so I mean, see. nigerians are everywhere even mm. for countries you've never heard of yeah so let me ask a very i'll ask um peter this just before after you wrote your list of your four countries you want to go to you wanted to go to what was your expectations before leaving now i'm going to like they say i'm going to obodo you but i'm going abroad <laughs> what was in your mind <laughs> what, was, what were you thinking what did you think would be so different Oh, coming here. First of mm. all, I expected the weather to be very different. 
I mean. So okay. I got I had gone online and I had done my due diligence, you know. Mm-hmm. I had researched what's the weather like, what's the landscape like, what's mm-hmm. everything like, you know. So um I would look at my AC in Nigeria and I would say 18 degrees, 21 degrees and I'm like, okay, so this is what yeah, this is what the temperature would feel like if I was there, you know. Hmm. And then the day I landed, uh, <laughs> I looked I looked at my phone, it was like 17 degrees and I was wearing I landed on the, on during the summer though. And mm. I was wearing a t-shirt and I was like, oh, it's summer, 17 degrees, 18 degrees. It's fine. It's just like my AC at home. And mm. then I stepped out of the airport and I'm like, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> so 17 degrees didn't feel like it was different from your AC at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? How, how is it so cold? And the guy who came to pick me up said, they didn't tell you. It's very cold here. I'm like, I know, but this is the same temp. This is supposed to be the same temperature with my AC in Nigeria. He said, man, forget your AC. Your AC is nowhere <laughs> near. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of like a bit of the first shocker I got um, mm. coming here. The next shocker I got is that I realized that when I'm in a train or, you know, just around my apartment or at the gym, when you walk up to someone and you try to, you know, initiate a conversation with the person, they are always very eager to run away from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter said, you are jumping the gun. Oh, we'll talk God. about your shocks and your... Um, I, <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so interesting. We are laughing okay. because that's uh, typically Swedish. <laughs> okay. I just want okay. to answer you and then keep going. But anyways, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me ask uh, Dami. So what were your, your own expectations? Now, okay, maybe for you it was different because you, you had lived in the UK, you had studied abroad, you lived yes. in Ghana. Yeah. So I don't know. If so, for me, I mean, in terms of, you know, living in Europe, I mean, it wasn't too different because I visited in 2019. So mm. I I knew, I had a feel of what Sweden, you know, was about. Was like, and for mm. me, the major um, expectation was in, you know, relation to how quickly um, the kids will settle and... Um, mm. Even for myself, you know, I mean, you know, once you've had like really good experience and you have nine years experience, you have, you are the peak of your career and everything, you just feel, okay, anybody that sees your CV will just, they'll start rushing you like, like Mm. pure water. (laughs) (laughs) That's not the experience here. And I mean, it was shocking to even find out that in Sweden, you, you need like somebody to refer you for a job before oh. you interview. I'm like, yeah. okay. I mean, this sounds like Nigeria where, you know, in Nigeria you complain that ah, everything is connection. But it happens here as well. So Yeah, think... that's very true about Sweden. Um, yeah. I used to, I normally say that in Nigeria we talk about nepotism and we talk about it in a very negative light. Why do you need to know somebody to know somebody? Mm-hmm. But in Sweden, actually, there's a lot of... Okay, let's say in Nigeria, maybe if you qualify, somebody may not even look at your CV because they have somebody planned, they want to give that position. That doesn't happen here. But here still... I mean, Swedes want to know that they can trust you. So they always look for you to be referred and you need a good referee. Sometimes you need a good reference to, to get a job. Yeah, there's a lot of that here. Actually. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that was it, you know. And then the, I think what delayed, you know, settling down the most was this, this golden number called the Pashan number. <laughs> Everybody has a personal number story in Sweden. Oh my goodness. It's like I, I wasn't I didn't exist in Sweden until I got that number. Like literally. <laughs> like even my kids, my kids used to get letters and phone calls. Me, I didn't get one until you know, because of the corona, you know, things delay. Mm. Um, things are processed a little longer you know this number used to be processed maybe within two to four weeks 
but it took mm. four good months before my number came out. And before that, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. You can't apply for school. You can't apply to go to the language school. You can't open a bank account. Like your life is just on hold. Mm. You know. So I mean, that's that kind of it threw me off a bit because I mean, mm. like, okay, yeah, I don't exist in this country. Like nobody knows me. It's only immigration that knows that I'm in this country. In fact, at mm. some point, I started feeling like an illegal immigrant <laughs> because <laughs> I just wasn't confident enough to go out, you know, using your Ghana card in Sweden. You get to some places, they'll tell you, oh, your card has been declined. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and you know, because you're black, you have that feeling that they'll be looking at you like, ah, Abi, this one does not have money. <laughs> yeah, but you know, anybody's <laughs> card can bounce. But of course, that's a self-conscious, isn't it? Yeah. That you're very self-conscious, self-aware. Yeah, that, oh, you know? I'm str- I'm a stranger here. Yes, and then you even ask them, okay, can I pay with cash? And they're like, sorry, we don't accept cash. I'm like, oh my god, how can I continue <laughs> life like this? Like it was, it was tough until mm. I got the pressure number. In fact, the day I got my pressure number was the day my phone rang for the first time in Sweden. <laughs> Four months. <laughs> like a Swedish number called my phone. Four months after. Wow. In fact, that day, I, I, I as in, I don't know if it was tears of jam, like God. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 I didn't, I wasn't existing in Sweden at all. Like nobody, it's only Niger phone calls I used to get and Ghana phone calls. <laughs> mm. You know? Wow. So, interesting I, i'm 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 happy that like you're talking about the things that were like your biggest shock and um seth was talking a little bit about <laughs> wanting to ask people for 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 the way and they're they're like they're in a hurry to go tell me more about that like your experience like the first things your first impressions and then your the biggest cultural shock for you when you when you got here i want to hear your stories because i remember when i first came here I moved here from from Moscow, and some of the first things that I noticed was the number of people on the streets was just was fewer than I was used to. You could be on the street, and you're wondering, are there people living in this country? That was my own first impression when I first came to Sweden. Like, where is everybody? And I was also shocked at the the the, the train going every eight minutes, ten minutes from Central Station. I mean, I came from Moscow where the, the trains go every 30 seconds. We don't run to catch anything. But in Sweden, if you don't run, you have to wait for the next bus or the next train. And then you miss the other one that you're planning for. And your old trip is like one hour delayed because you missed one. Those are my own first impressions. But tell me, what were your first impressions moving to, moving to Sweden? This is for Seth, right? You can go ahead. <laughs> okay, Seth should go ahead. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. Um, first impressions. Um, okay, so the drive back from the airport to my hotel, uh, we stopped by at Max to grab a burger. Mm-hmm. And you know when you eat and um first of all, everywhere was clean. And I felt like, okay, you're probably robots moving around, <laughs> picking up stuff. <laughs> You know, I mean, it was squeaky clean. I'm like, how can a place be this clean? Like, you won't see dust or sand on the road. The sidewalks are clean. I'm like, okay, okay. I'm I'm liking this. So, I mean, we ate the burger and I got up to leave. You know, I left my stuff on the table to leave. Waiting for the... the, 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 the Waiting for the... What do you call it? For, for this... You said you say say betrayal, like the, the... Someone that will come and pack this. Yeah. And I got up to leave and the guy who was driving me said, why do you do that? And I'm like, what do you mean why do I do that? I'm, I'm done eating. I'm, let's continue to my hotel. He says, no. You're supposed to pack your stuff and go throw it away. And I'm like, Really? He said, yes. <laughs> there are no robots, just human beings doing their civil exactly. duties. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, then it, it hits me. That's why everywhere is clean. Because everybody takes makes Take a conscious effort. Yeah. To make that happen. And over the months, I began to understand I began to observe that it's actually the culture. You don't just throw trash anywhere. There are trash cans everywhere. 
if you have trash you wait till you get to the next trash can and you dispose of it and i'm like wow it's one of the reasons why it's good to leave Nigeria, you know? I tried that in Nigeria was and everybody thought I was crazy. I went yeah. home on holidays and I was holding on to my trash and they were like, throw me the word. I'm like, where? Because I came straight from Sweden and I just had to hold on to that <laughs> that maze cup until I got home. <laughs> yeah. Then the next experience I got uh, or the next um, kind of shock i got was yeah i got to my hotel and there was no receptionist Uh (laughs) aha and i'm like yeah so it was it's actually self-service you Uh come in yeah you type in your phone number they print they send an sms to you to confirm that you are the one who made the booking and so on and so forth you know so my office Mm. had already arranged for everything you know, so me just coming to the hotel was to come. So there was a self checkout and everything, and everything was in Swedish. Yeah, but anyway, I the the shock for me for in this was that there was no one to ask questions. There was no one to ask where is this or where is that or how do I do this. I just had to punch in stuff, and then a receipt was printed and. I, they said take a card and put it here. I put a card. They chipped it for me, and I said your room is one two seven. Go to room one two seven, and I went to one two seven, and it was already prepared. My name was already there. My dinner for the day was already there, and I'm like, hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> At first, this class, I didn't want to eat the food. I'd be like, man. I was just going to ask that if that was in Nigeria, we have eaten the food. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. this is interesting. I know you were still continuing. Said I want to say you had your office because you came here as somebody working till you moved in. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask Dami. Was okay. there some food waiting for you when you got to? <laughs> because people think this is how we prepare for. <laughs> no, don't, don't tell me like at least my husband, you know, had ordered some Nigerian soups and all that. But okay. I mean, when we got home, he was on this um vegetarian or salad healthy eating diet. He didn't have rice, and I'm like, okay, so this too, what are we going to eat it with? <laughs> you know, so I had to send him to. Ika that night. I'm like, please, we have to eat. We're hungry. Because, I mean, the airline we came with, the food was nasty. So, I mean, we came in really hungry. Yeah, so, so, you're not about to eat any salad. Yeah. <laughs> you <need a> food. yeah. <laughs> After a long journey. No. Just to say, for, 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 for the sake of people that are listening, thinking, oh, maybe this is how it is all the time. I came as a student, so I didn't have the privilege that Seth had for somebody to have booked his hotel. In fact, I was shocked when I came here. As a student, I, we had paid, I think we paid like one one month's rent. So in my head, coming as a student, like just coming, changing um, country, I was thinking, okay, I've paid for one month and I'll start working or maybe look for work and then I'll be able to pay for the second month. And the first thing they gave us at KTH then was a bill to go and pay for our accommodation. <laughs> And I was just looking at that bill thinking, you have <laughs> to be kidding me. And it like, I think it had two weeks payment on it. And I was just thinking, all my money is going to go to pay this rent. And they told me, oh, the money you paid before, we will keep it as deposit. When you move out in a wow. year's time, and if the place is clean and tidy, we'll give you back the money. If it's not clean, they will pay the cleaners with the money you paid as deposit. Oh, I'm telling you, the day I was moving out of that hostel a year later, we cleaned like no man's business. <laughs> <laughs> I needed my 300. I needed my 300 euros back. <laughs> oh, and I remember I had a Ghanaian when I first got to my room. Um, I had been like, God, I need somebody that I can live with and it would be nice. I had a Ghanaian roommate, very wonderful woman from Ghana. She was an amazing big mommy or big sister, whatever I want to call her now, that she was like, Bobby, we are hungry. Let's go. She went and got hot dogs from the shop. (laughs) She was like, we just have to eat something. That's my, I think it was my first meal here, hot dogs, that we had to go and buy from the shop downstairs, even where we couldn't speak the language. So there were no 
no dinners waiting for us to just to say that the experiences are different based on how you come <laughs> yeah <laughs> how you enter europe can determine your experience yes <laughs> <laughs> oh mm-hmm. that's interesting so dami share some of your own um okay no, let me let okay. Seth continue so okay. you were talking about the hotel and, and then you ate the food <laughs> yeah and so i i laid on my bed I was waiting for it to get dark, and it never got dark. <laughs> <laughs> Because you came in summer. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, one o'clock is happening. I mean, it's still bright out there. <laughs> you know, I had to force myself to go to bed. Uh, and then the last one I would uh, I would like to talk about was um, going to work. So mm. you know, in Nigeria now, um, you're so tough. Lagos traffic. <laughs> you wake up 4:30, start getting ready 5:30, boom. You know, yeah, out of the house. Yeah, out of the house. You know, all in a bit to beat traffic and so on and so forth. So I I woke up really early. I barely slept that night, of course, because I kept waiting for the sun to go down, which never happened until I forced myself to go to bed. And then I had this guy who was supposed to come take me. You know, because I didn't know the route from the hotel to my office yeah uh, yeah so you know i woke up 5:30 by 6 o'clock i was dressed i was at the reception <laughs> of the hotel waiting for my guy to show up and my guy did not show up 6:30 6:45 i'm like come on work starts by 8 o'clock what time am i going to start this job <laughs> you know And so I call my manager. My manager calls the guy, and my manager calls me back, and he says, "Oh, you know what? He will be there by seven fifteen." I'm like, seven fifteen. He will be here by seven fifteen. Does he know that I don't want to be late on my first day? <laughs> and, and then they say, "Yeah, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it." And so seven fifteen, I see the guy walking through the reception, and I'm like, "How did that happen? This is strange." Seven fifteen is seven fifteen. Wow. Hmm. Okay. And the guy tells me, "Oh, no worry. In 30 minutes, you'll be at the office." And by 7:45, I was at the office. Now that was the the biggest shock of my life that you could predict and correctly estimate your commute time. <laughs> wow. Is this in this one? <laughs> like my brain did some assault 200,000 times. I'm like, "Wait." <laughs> Like you mean I can wake up by seven o'clock and I'll say I'll be at the office by eight fifty-five or seven fifty-five, and I'll be there. I mean, so I mean these are the few I can remember. So over wow. to you, Dami. Th- thanks for sharing those those first impressions and shocks, <laughs> Dami. Dami has shared a little bit of our own, but let, let's hear more, please. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, coming in a pandemic. I mean, moving to Sweden in a pandemic, coming from mm. Africa, where you know, mask wearing a mask is mandated. Um, in fact, it's like you're almost running away from each other <laughs> in, back home, and mm. then coming here. In fact, coming here, I bought like two boxes of um, nose mask mm. for because in back in Ghana, the kids too had to wear mask. Hmm. So I bought their the children's mask as well. I did everything, and then you know the first few days it was just strange. Like okay, as if nobody is wearing mask here, like just a few people, <laughs> and I'm like, what's what's going on in this country? <laughs> But you know, when I tell people now, they ask me, oh, so how's how's the COVID situation there? I'm like, to be honest, everybody is just living their life here. <laughs> like you know, there's no restriction or anything like if you don't even put your mind to it you won't remember that there's anything called covid mm. but i mean i get people are disciplined enough to you know take the proper precautions um mm. also my i think i shared this with Bobby before like playing in sweden right for the kids mm. So my eldest son started school and you know i think in less than two weeks You know, we just do our thing. You know, take him to school, bring him back home, and then we're well, okay. And then go for the occasional walks in the park, and that. And then one day, um, my doorbell rings. I'm like, who knows me in Sweden? That's who, who is ringing my doorbell? 
And then I opened the door and it was this, you know, little boy. And he was like, hi, I'm here to see Ayo. And I'm like, okay. So my son comes and he's like, oh, my friend is from my school. I'm like, okay. So I was expecting to see the boy's mother behind him. Like, following <laughs> him to Ayo's Make house. sure that he gets to your house. Make sure that he gets to his destination. <laughs> I didn't see anybody. Then my son was like, oh, I want to go to his house. I'm like, not today. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so the next day, the boy comes again, unaccompanied. And then my oh. son was like, okay, he wants to go there. I'm like, okay, no problem. But as the African mother in me, we have to go together. Oh, yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> because I need to know where you're going to. I can't start looking for somebody in the country I'm new to. So that oh. was a bit... I mean, it, it took me a while to get over it, like to let my son actually go out to play, you know, around the area around. Mm. all by himself. Mm. So, I mean, that's that. And then, you know, Sweden is surrounded with, I mean, there's a lot of forest around. And, you know, mm. this Sunday, my husband went out with the boys. And I was like, oh, let me even take a stroll. So I went through the forest and all that. <laughs> On my way back, I saw, <laughs> I saw, is he a deer? Yeah. Yeah, probably a deer. <laughs> oh my God. My heart was, uh, my, my heart was out of my chest. Like, I didn't know where to run to. <laughs> was, I changed my direction immediately. I'm like, what is this? What is the day doing on the road? <laughs> Broad day afternoon. I'm like, no, I'm not doing this again. So when I got home and I was narrating to my husband, I was like, <laughs> What's was your problem that he sees them regularly? I'm like, yeah, it's really? just a deer. I'm like, really okay. close to nature. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I've never been that close to one, so I wasn't sure if they would attack, attack or, or not. Mm. You know, when I was alone, it was a Sunday, everywhere was just quiet, like there was nobody on the road, no cars on the road. So even if I wanted to scream, I don't know where to. <laughs> <laughs> So I just changed my direction. I'm like, God, please, as I'm going home, just I don't want to see any other animal on my way because I didn't know what I would do. <laughs> a so, deer yeah. was at least better than seeing a moose or something, you know, or running into a bear or a wild pig. I know. Yeah. So, so interesting. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Do you and find then... the culture similar? Sorry? Mm-hmm. Like, do you find some similarities in culture? Um... To, to to where you're coming from to Ghana or to Nigeria um I think for me I, I was a bit prepared because I'd read so much about Sweden so okay. much so I, you I guys are researchers Peter prepared <laughs> you prepared <laughs> I read so much about Sweden and then I mean for me living in Ghana which is a little laid back more laid back than Nigeria and then mm. coming to Sweden, I mean, is also laid back compared mm. to maybe living in the UK. UK mm. is just everybody's on the run and everything, but Sweden is a bit small, chilled out and all. So, I mean, in that regard, yes, in the laid back coming from Ghana, yes. Maybe you thought Ghana really was laid back. You were like, okay, they're very laid. But then you come to see, you're like, what? Yeah. Can people be this laid back? Yeah, this one is extra. <laughs> Please, anybody coming to Sweden, you just have to learn patience. Yeah. A lot, you need to have a lot of patience. Like, you think... Standing because, on the queue. Yes. <laughs> behind someone and they're answering her for 30 minutes. Exactly. Everybody. <laughs> or even calling on the phone and you're on the phone for like hour, on the, an hour waiting for your turn. You have mm. to be patient. Like you have to learn patience. I thought I was patient, but I've learned to be extra patient in Sweden. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. I mean, that's the similarity. But I think the part because I'd researched. I mean, the part of you know, Swedes not at first like they they will probably not make the first move like mm. you know, to be friends and mm. all that. So I've learned, you know, just to. To mind my business, like hmm. I mean, if the opportunity presents itself, why not? But I won't go knocking on the neighbor's door, hello, or something, you know, being overly friendly, you know. Hmm. When the opportunity arises, yes, you can do that. But I mean, it's unlike the UK where 
you know even the old lady passing on the road will smile at you and say hello to you and you know have a little chat with you someone random you've never met i totally you, get that before you find that in sweden i think it's rare yeah very we used to we traveled once to the UK on holiday and it was like we were in a, in I don't know we were in I Evan because everybody was saying hello to our baby girl and we were looking at her thinking it's the same girl we carry around in Stockholm and nobody cares <laughs> and now we're in, we're in London the old lady like you said in the car is like oh she's so sweet exactly. and I'm thinking okay thank you very much <laughs> 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 because nobody sees that in Sweden yeah you know? um, yeah people were uh, more open maybe in the UK so. Seth, you were coming straight from Nigeria, straight from Lagos. You landed in Stockholm. Mm-hmm. Were you culture, culture shocked or at work? Share your experience at work compared to workplace in Nigeria. Oh, well, uh, my manager would always say thank you after doing something. And I'm like, thank you, me, man. I'm being paid, <laughs> I'm being paid to do this stuff, you know? And then, um, okay, so first culture shock at work hmm there were a lot first of all um people expect you to be responsible so Mm. nobody is hounding you nobody is chasing you from pillar to post nobody is Mm. asking you for updates what's the status of this nobody is putting unnecessary pressure on you you know Mm. to get stuff done at a certain time you know even though there is pressure but it's never really there. And that was like mm. a first shock for me because I'm not coming from Nigeria, you have to come to work with your gun. One, <laughs> one for your managers, <laughs> one for your colleagues, one for every other person. One for your time. manager's family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, mm. that was there was that. And then um, there was a second, the other one that um, really took me by surprise was um, the fact that uh, you could come at any time you wanted and go at any time you wanted. So, yes, there is maybe because it's an IT company or a telecom company, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but then there was this, yeah, normally we work 9 to 5, but then I see folks coming to work by 10, by 11 and i also see the same folks leaving by 3 p.m 4 p.m in the evening Mm. i'm usually the first to get to work and i'm usually the last to leave you know Mm. and because some um, people might not be working 100 percent anyways they might be working 80 Mm percent they might have an appointment (laughs) well maybe and that was what i thought first right until Mm. i decided you know after the first few months after like six months i'd be like a guy, you need to tone this thing down. You are not in a war zone. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's try to scale back some of these things. You know, scale down rather. So mm. you know, rather than get to work by nine o'clock, mm. I would get to work by ten, eleven, thereabout. And mm. once I was done, of course, the work. And I'm, I'm not okay. I'll get to that. Once I was done with whatever I needed to do, I would go play tennis. And then from tennis, I'll carry my bag and I'm gone, you know. Mm. And I I did that for some time. I expected somebody to say something and nobody said anything. And I'm like, oh. okay. So maybe this is the new standard now. So I did that for a couple of months, three months. Nobody said anything. I mean, it, everybody was chill with it. In fact, though, I, there was one time I got a mail from my manager and he was like, you are doing so well. We like the quality of work. And I'm like, duh, I only work five hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody, you know, while I was doing that, I had people who tell me, other Nigerians as well, who were from war zones. And they would be like, <laughs> nigga, you know, they can fire you and you'll be back to Nigeria faster than you can imagine. And I'm like, well, I'm going to risk this. I mean, you know, I did that up until Corona started and we all had to start working from home okay. and then you know how it goes. Yeah. Mm. Well, then, I guess the um, most important thing is that you get your work done, right? Exactly. Yeah. Just get your work done. Yeah. Then um, the other shock for me at work was it was okay for you to disagree with your manager. 
Duh. Disagree with your manager in Nigeria. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, call you for your sack later. Hey, oh dear Lord. I mean, I, 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 I didn't have a very good experience back in Nigeria with my manager. I mean, yeah. you understand? Because, of course, they, nobody likes being disagreed with, and, you know. Mm, mm. And coming, coming here, I realized that it's okay to raise an objection. Mm. it's okay it's okay i mean in the meeting everybody i mean like there was no hierarchy it was flat even though we knew oh i report to this person but it was flat and yeah and it i saw that it was okay for me to challenge certain things and as a matter of fact they began to look forward to it oh peter what do you have to say about this what do you think about this and i'm like huh does it matter (laughs) I mean, you're my boss, you get to call the shot, so why should it matter? They're like, no, 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 we value your opinion. What do you think? Do you think it's the right way? Do you think it's the wrong way? And I'm, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's you know? actually very peculiar. I think that's in a, in, a, in, a, in a way very peculiar to Sweden. I don't know if yeah. it's the same in other Scandinavian countries, but I know that that's not the case in the UK. Maybe um, Dami can shed some light on that. For people that are listening and their own dream is, Oh, let's move to the UK and all of that. I think that's very different in, in yeah. the UK. Mm-hmm. It's very flat here. Very, very flat. I agree with said You're talking with your boss, you are disagreeing. It's where you get from you're like, did you use your brain, Bobby? <laughs> you, just, <laughs> you just disagreed with your boss. Just now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I think you get the best that way because your boss might not even know everything. Yeah. Mm. So That's you true. get you get a lot done. You know, if you get ideas from others, you get a better output than, you know, just That's doing true. what... I mean, I remember back in Ghana and, you know, I used to have this boss, like, it's like she doesn't even want to hear your idea. Just go and do what she's saying. What, exactly. And you're trying to tell her that this your idea doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> so the slang we used to use, just go and do your messenger work because that's yeah. what you want done. You know it's not going to work, so just go and do it so that you can prove mm. to them that it's not going to work. Mm. So you're just wasting time and resources. Yeah. That's what I, I came as a student, so I can share that. I can tell you it's the same in the lecture room here. It's different from the Nigerian lecturer-student relationship, totally different. I mean, the lecturer will start the lecture by, okay, uh, we're going to be talking about this topic today. Feel free to interrupt anytime. You can ask any question anytime. So we had this guy from, I don't remember, maybe, I think it was from Pakistan. Every time, excuse me, professor, professor. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, can we just have the class now? <laughs> no, professor, the guy didn't just finish. But you know, the guy would always answer. And they also didn't want to be called professor something. The guy, our teacher wanted to be called Leonard. That was his name. He wanted to just be called Leonard. And you are thinking, my mouth is big. Okay, I was not even necessarily coming from Nigeria as a student, but I was coming from Russia where you have to, there's a way you call the person, you call them with their first name and the last name. That's the way to show respect. And you use this you, the respectful you, and all of that. But in Sweden, they say, Leonard, and I have a question. Why do you think this? And you're talking to your lecturer. Your mouth is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same and then you want to go out of the lecture you just walk out no lecturer is telling you i'm going to take attendance if you don't yeah, stay you're not going to yeah. get your results no even if they mark you you can ask for you want to know how it was marked mm-hmm. you get your you yeah. get your scripts back i mean the mm-hmm. last time i got my script back was in in secondary school here you you <laughs> submit exam you are in you are in master you are a master student the, the guy returns back your script so you can yeah. see how you failed and how you passed this is really different totally yeah. different and you get five hours to do an exam with all your textbooks and everything really? <laughs> i'm telling you but still you want another five hours because the questions they're asking you <laughs> <laughs> it's not wow. it's not what they call beru beso in yoruba put it to your head grab <laughs> it and bring it out no this is <laughs> applying knowledge so they give you the chance to have your textbook you can bring dinner and lunch and everything five hours wow. exam i did in kth wow. and even after five hours you're thinking lord i need one more or two because i don't know if i'll pass <laughs> Are you serious? I, I'm telling you, and here to get an A, in, at least in KTH, you have to get 90 over 100 wow. or 95 over 110. 
So all of us, you just see yourself in your B or C and you're happy because that C is 75 over 100. So <laughs> you carry the C with pride. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, just saying that the, yeah, it's very flat here. The lecturers are also like that in school as a student. So you, you find your voice, you have confidence because nobody is like like listen to mm. nobody's on your neck pressuring yeah. you and trying to. You're not in a war zone. Yeah, nobody is intimidating you. No, are your lecturers? The wow. guy who, <laughs> the guy rides to to school wow. on a bike. <laughs> 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 uh, so there is no wow. oppression. None whatsoever. Yeah. So let me ask, um, what would you, like for somebody that is moving here, uh, what would you tell them to think about before moving and then to plan for when they move here? Because, you know, like we've been talking about, the experience is different um, in Sweden. Yeah, so many things are different. Getting accommodation. Maybe that's what I should even ask Dami. So you're coming from Ghana. I'm sure you live with like... Because I'm always telling my husband, I need like four maids. But in Sweden, there are no maids. So let me just be doing it. Maybe I get a robot, robot vacuum cleaner, a robot dishwasher. Even if I can get a robot... You know, somebody that drops the children in school. But not get into the corner. Remember that. So you still have to do it. <laughs> You know, so I thought that robots were picking up trash in Sweden, but it's people doing it. It's the same thing with our children. There, there is nobody to do it for you. How did you feel coming from your madam life in Nigeria hmm. and then coming to Sweden? Tell me, tell me about my madam life. Oh my God, I lived in madam life in Ghana. Gosh, like, you know, I had this amazing nanny that, you know, she just took all the stress off me, you know, coupled with the fact that my husband was away. You know, and my job at the time was demanding. I mean, I could, you know, the way African job is, you can just, as in, they can, you can get to work today and they'll tell you they're traveling, they are traveling tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Mm. You know, I had that kind of, I was at peace. Like, I could actually go for short trips, one or two days' trip, and leave my kids with my nanny. And mm. I'm like, if I was in Nigeria, I can't afford to do this. Anyway. Fast forward to coming to <laughs> Sweden. To Sweden, a nannyless country. <laughs> you know, there are nannies. If you have the money, you can pay for for that. But you know, not at this point. I mean, I guess I didn't. I wasn't entirely prepared for that transition from working mom to stay at home mom. Like the first month, gosh, I hated myself. Like. The way I was on LinkedIn applying for jobs, and my husband was laughing at me that <laughs> you want to start going to work, eh? <laughs> you're tired of doing mommy, mommyhood. Like it was, it was, <laughs> I think the hardest part was, for me was the cooking. You mm. have to cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. And before you finish one, before you even get yourself, it's time to make lunch. Yeah. As you're even trying to round up lunch, it's time to cook dinner. I'm like, and there was no Mabel. Can you go into the kitchen and do no, that quickly no. while I'm <laughs> like, you, you have to do everything. Like, and you know, yes, because sir. I was in Ghana, like, my girl, she could just, I mean, we used to eat fresh because there was light. You could stock the house with things and you can afford to. I never used to cook stew for like one week or two weeks. It was like you just cook still for that day or for the for two days and that. So <laughs> coming here and so the first month I was doing that, but nobody taught me. <laughs> Before I started, you know, cooking in bulk and planning my cooking. I haven't so was, I haven't gotten to that point. I can never still cook like days ahead. I'm also a fresh eater. I think I was spoiled back home. So I'm always there cooking every evening, which is not a good it's, way of it's, using it's, your time in not, Sweden. <laughs> not, it's, it's not the best. So, I mean, for anybody coming, if you were in my shoes and you're going to transition temporarily to a stay-at-home mom, I would just say, or to anybody really, manage your expectations about coming here. Have mm. a proper plan. Have plan A, B, C, D, right? Mm. Everybody will not have the opportunity my husband or step had when they had a job before coming here. No. So if they are coming here to start afresh, 
have plan A, B, C, D. Learn a trade. Learn for women. Learn something. Learn mm. how to make hair. Learn how to make meat pie, puff, puff. Small but jobs. It's... Learn mm. something that can keep you busy. Cake. That can even you can even turn to a side hustle while you're looking for a job. You know. Mm. So that I mean, if the job doesn't come back, come by quickly, you can at least fall back on that to also support the family. Mm. And do your research, like watch YouTube, follow all the channels about Sweden. I'm sure I've watched all the videos on YouTube about Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm following all the black people that have that are influencers on Instagram in Sweden. You know, just mm. to have a feel of what life in Sweden is about and all that. And then I mean that applies to anywhere anyways. Even if you're yeah. moving to where there are so many Nigerians and everything is just even if you're moving to the UK, it's good to do some your research to know what yes. you have to expect. Yes, mm. yes, yes. And then I mean domestic responsibility. Our um, Nigerian men, they they are they are special. <laughs> get so ready, you... get ready. Here comes the <laughs> <laughs> our so, Nigerian men, our yeah, Nigerian yeah. men, yeah, how did it go? Special. I beg to differ, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> they are very special. So before you even come to this sentiment, just have that discussion and start practicing it before you come here, so that you won't turn to fight and you won't strain the relationship when you get here, because it's not mm. easy, you know. I mean, in my case, back in Ghana, I had a nanny doing practical game. So even me, myself, I didn't have to do much. Now mm-hmm. I'm transitioning to Sweden where, you know, you have to do it. I mean, there's no nanny coming to clean or cook or go to the markets for you. You have mm-hmm. to do everything. So for mm-hmm. you to be seen in this environment, you just, you need to share the responsibility. Hmm. Thank you need you to share that. the responsibility. And it's not a case of, okay, yeah, the, um, it's a woman's job to go shopping. We go shopping together. Together. If we yeah. don't go together, he will do it. Maybe when he's coming back from the gym or something, he will do the shopping. Even for the mm. boys, I can't remember the last time I had to dress up or bring out something for them. That's my husband's job. Because we just we are in this in this my life together. together. Exactly. So we have to make it work together. So it shouldn't mm. be one sided where you know one person feels I'm the one doing this and that. You know, there are some weekends where my husband cooks. Mm. It's okay. So these are things you need to make a routine even before you get here. So that it's not when you get here you start complaining. Eh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Also, mm. get your kids independent as well. Yeah. Because yeah, you can, if you say you're doing everything for them, you are going to break down and you're going to burn out. So mm. just do that. Because up until the time we got here, um, my nanny still used to bath for my my older Last child. Time. No, no, oh, older one. one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was when we got here, I think he was he went to the toilet and it was like oh mommy i'm done i'm like wait oh, you're starting school and i can't imagine that your teachers will be cleaning up for you so you better get it done and he cried so much that day. i'm like sorry you just have to do it yeah we yes, start so. them i mean we start them early here in sweden from year, yeah. year one they put the food in front of them they learn to eat they learn to do this they learn to do that. exactly even my younger one he will he used to be my nanny will sit down with him and be feeding him one by one but he had to learn that because uh, i i mean i if i have to add that to everything i'm doing i'm just going to you're not going to manage yeah yeah my, my 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 son is three going to four he showers by himself and somebody uh-huh. was telling me oh you know my kids i'm teaching them to shower like your child is almost seven man my four-year-old is already in the bathroom showering in himself. Fact, how will i add fact, all of that I, to everything here, else <laughs> when i got here i was speaking to one of my friends in um in ghana she has three boys twins and then one other her eldest is seven mm. and when i was telling her that oh my eldest showers himself she was like what that she still showers for her seven year old 
Uh, I think we we indulge children back home to yes. have help. Here, yes. you don't even have the liberty or the privilege to indulge them. Exactly. So even this morning, my three-year-old was having a bath, and I just remember, and I'm like, ah, when has I bath for this boy? He's been a while. <laughs> you need to go yeah. in and scrub extra <laughs> just for that one time in a month. <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm like well he's going to be four soon so he should he should get used to it you know and yeah. even the older one is learning responsibility there's some morning i wake up and he's shouting for his brother he's gotten everything they're all ready i'm like mm. wow so mm. i mean you need to put structures and routines in place to make your life easy you know have a strict routine for your own rest time as well Back in Ghana, they used to go to bed at nine. But here, from seven thirty, they are preparing to go to bed by eight o'clock. I don't want so to hear any noise because mm. I also want to, you know, have some peace and quiet from That's eight true. to maybe eleven or twelve or whenever I decide to sleep. Mm. So you need to have that kind of structured, you know, life. And so that's so interesting. It, yeah, that's it. And then while you're waiting to get a job, get busy. You know, network, make friends, meet, mm. make your own friends outside your husband's, you know, so friend. Cool. Mm. Yes. Make your own friends outside your husband's circle. Get busy. If you stay idle, trust me, you're going to be frustrated and you might get depressed. So get yeah. busy. There are so many resources out there you can learn. Um, YouTube is an amazing place you can learn different things i've learned how to use power bi on youtube i've learned how to use canva different mm. apps on on youtube so please use that period to learn and develop and you know sharpen your skills Thank for the wow. that's so that's so good peter what's your what's your um advice or what would you say to somebody that is planning that exit from from Nigeria or from Ghana or from somewhere in Africa, Kenya, anywhere. Just thinking, I'm getting out of here. I just want to go to Europe. I just want to land in Europe. What do you say to them? <laughs> oh, well, first of all, there's no money on the streets. So. <laughs> oh, are you sure? Yeah, nothing, is, nothing is raining down on the street. No gold, no diamonds. No, 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 no. Yeah, so people just think, oh, I'm coming abroad. Okay. Let me put some context to this. So I had this friend back in Nigeria. And of course, um, so I've always been a diehard Nigerian up until 2015 when I started looking for a way out. And, there know, should be so a club for you people. The diehard yeah. Nigerians who later <laughs> became, oh no, I need to get out of here. <laughs> you know, so I have this friend who also continued. I mean, he was, he, he was still a diehard Nigerian up until 2020, you know, <laughs> when he gave up. And um, he wanted to, he, he has been looking to travel. And so he buzzes me and he's like, okay, I want to browse Alpha and I won't come abroad. I'm like, okay, what should they come do? He's like, what are you I coming here to do? I don't know. I just won't come. I just won't come out the country. I'm like, okay, come out. When you come here, what are you going to do? He's yeah. like, when I come here, I will find my way. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Oh God, things not be like that. So they tell you, "Sena, so it be." You know, you know. And from interacting with a lot of people, I find that a lot of people have that uh, that premonition that, yeah, don't worry. I let me land just... in Europe. Exactly. Land exactly. Make money. money from the floor. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So uh, the first thing I would like to say is. Um, if you're living in Africa and you're coming to Europe or you're thinking of moving, um, have some goals mm-hmm. and um, tone down your expectations. Yep. Mm. There, yep. There we go again. Tone down your expectations. Tone down your expectations. I mean, it, I, so when I came here, I was like, I, I, I didn't come here the way I wanted to come, but I came nonetheless, and I felt like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to go here, and in six months, and I'm going to change. Sorry, that didn't happen. <laughs> like Dami said, I had to learn patience. And, mm. you know, it didn't turn around for me up until two years later. That mm. was a lot of waiting, mm-hmm. you know? So, 
Yeah, I would say have goals, uh, tone down your expectations. And then, um, well, the, the last that I would also say is um, it's okay to come to Europe and not live the lifestyle you are used to living in Nigeria. Why do I say that? Yes. In Nigeria, you can drive five cars. Mm-hmm. You can... <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing and I'm laughing. <laughs> I mean, in fact, that my last post on on Niger Mom, it was, I mean, about that, you know, managing your expectations. Exactly. Yeah. So for the, for the for the purpose of our audience, Dami's experience in Sweden made us say, "Oh no, I need to start an Instagram page, yes. and um, <laughs> I need to share my experience." So you need to follow her on Instagram. It's Niger Moms Abroad. If you're in Nigeria, yes. you need to get on that. Even if you're not in Nigeria, I'm sure you'll pick one or two things. Yes. <laughs> from my Instagram page. Make sure you follow her. Please do. Yeah, so, so, so you, you won't drive five cars, say. Yeah, you won't You just drive take five. public transport. Maybe you will not even drive one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it's okay also to not live in a duplex. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's, like it's okay to be i mean that was i mean i mean i i don't i can't tell you how much of a difference that makes it's okay to be contented it's okay to not want to to not live the lifestyle the people in their abroad paint when they come to nigeria mm-hmm. things are not things are not that way here right no i mean i've been here for close to two years and in mm-hmm. nigeria I always used to think of what would I do without a car. I've not had to think of buying a car for two years, mm-hmm. not because I can't afford it, but because I don't see the need. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you get? And when I tell my people in Nigeria that I don't own a car, they are like, "Oga, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Which kind of abroad did you go ab- to? <laughs> exactly. Which abroad did you?" <laughs> exactly <laughs> mm. you know so yeah I, I mean that would that would be my advice just i mean come down from wherever you are with mm. another way mm. yeah i like I that think... you touch on that that pe- like we should manage it and it's okay not to have this idea that living abroad means i'll be able to drive this jeep and that jeep and own yes. this big house because mm-hmm. people come home they come and brag or show off when they come back home mm-hmm. but the life they're living in europe is not necessarily like that and exactly. that's something that we also need to work on mm-hmm. like painting the right picture when we when when we go back home you go on yes. holidays don't try to make don't try to impress anybody mm-hmm. <laughs> because there's, there's not it's, it's not worth it because you're just you're you're, you're building people's expectations when they want yes. to go out they don't they, they have a different thing in their mind i yes. remember the first time my parents came when i had my baby our first born when we had our first born we had a two two room in Sweden, it's called a two room. It's not a two bedroom. It's two room. <laughs> one sitting room, one bedroom. Our room. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my mother. I, I, I listen to the story. My mother in law, my father in law, they came in, and my mother in law was like, "Oh, daddy, let them show you inside the house, and you can go and rest." And my and my father in law, we had already told him the story of like this is where we are staying. He was just laughing and smiling in his mind, like there is no nothing to show. This is it. So the room on that side, sit, room on this side, kitchen there, and dining room. That's it. Nothing to show. This is it. It's a square. <laughs> a rectangle. You can go through it with your eyes just from the door. <laughs> it's, it's very true. Like that managing expectation, it is very true. Because right now, you'd even find like the the caliber of people wanting to leave Nigeria. You know, there are people that are doing well. Like they have yeah. the yeah. and they have everything and I'm like, even if people are actually selling their properties in Nigeria to move abroad, mm-hmm. and okay, you've sold your properties, your mansion you abroad, <laughs> can you actually maintain the same lifestyle? So you need yeah. to tone down and even prepare yourself mentally. Because, I mean, I think that's where some issues in marriages also come in. Yeah, I was going to ask you to, to share a little bit, if you can, shortly before we round up on how to manage change and how to cope you're touching on that so that's very good please share yeah. how do so, you I mean, manage it's just to, to mentally change. prepare yourself like okay you need to accept that 
it, it might not be easy. Like you're going mm. to a different country. Mm. I mean, for some people, maybe they find it easy. But some mm. people, you still have to go through, you know, I mean, if you say you want to be an engineer or you want to work for this kind of company today, you might not get there direct. You might have to work for 10 different country companies before you get to where you're going to. Hmm. So even when going through that process, don't don't feel like a failure because you might still get there eventually. But well, you will get there process. eventually. That's exactly. the bottom line. With People usually patients. get there eventually, but you know, these are microwave generation. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's <laughs> like you want things to happen right now. Yeah. Right mm. now, right now. And mm. I mean, people shouldn't just fall for everything that is going. I mean, people post on Instagram and social media and everything. It's not really what it is like. Like mm. everybody can go to a mall now, take a really nice picture, and everybody will feel that, ah, that means You're living abroad. That means balling in Sweden. <laughs> Meanwhile, they don't know the things I'm struggling with. They don't know that you, you could you walked there or you rode your bicycle exactly. there. You Nobody parked. thinks about that. <laughs> Nobody actually thinks about that. You know? Mm. So mm. you need to be as in you need to get off your high horse and mm. come down to reality and then gradually build it back up. Yeah, because it's a process, isn't it? It's a process. Yeah. And you have to fall, you have to if you don't have the kind of experience that has, you have to go through that process. Oh, tell me about it. You have I to go through the process. I came as a student and I know that I <laughs> I did there was a time I had this um taking care of someone job. And my dad, I was telling him, oh, I'm doing... And he's like, we asked you to study medicine. You said no. Now you said you're doing what? I said, don't worry. It's just as a student, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're, you have to do what you have to do. But today, yeah. we thank God. So Yes. So in the end, I mean, you would you'd be thankful for, you know, going... When you look back, you would you would get there eventually. And when you look back, you'd be glad that, okay, and at least you went through that process. You learned one or two things from that process. So, I mean... Don't, don't, that's why I said you need to have plan A, B, C. So mm. if plan A is that, okay, I'm going to apply. I mean, I was a manager where I was coming from. I'm going to apply to get a manager job. If that doesn't work out, what's plan B? Mm. If plan B is to work as an intern, to get an to opportunity with a, with a company, doesn't make mm. you a failure. No. Doesn't mean in two, three years' time, you cannot be somewhere else where mm. you would get back to the manager position that you initially wanted to. Yeah. And I always also say, you're in a new country. There's a price you have to pay because you found people here whose exactly. parents and grandfathers or whatever paid a price. Mm-hmm. So you are now starting to mm-hmm. pay your own price and exactly. give into the system so that you can mm-hmm. get something from it. Mm-hmm. And I would say to anybody maybe moving to Europe, not UK and not Canada, learn the language. Because yes. yeah. we speak Swedish in Sweden. <laughs> Very important. In fact, I, I mean, think I underestimated that because you see online that oh in sweden they speak english and what 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 yeah, yeah i know my husband did too he was shocked <laughs> even tonight he's like are you telling me i won't be able to get a job that is in english i'm like just remove it from your head if you do get it like an it job like seth or whatever mm-hmm. it's good for you but you need the language <laughs> yes you, it's absolutely important like i never the thought language. that i would at this my age i'll be learning a new language like that that i will have to <laughs> be mandated to learn a new language <laughs> but i mean it's it's a fun experience you know i mm. mean it's something good having to speak Another a different language, language. yeah mm. Hmm. Well, I, I like the fact process. that you say it's a fun experience. You have to enjoy the process. Exactly. Process, take the positive things from the process. Exactly. Oh, man. Seth, what do you want to say? I, I hear yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Like, I don't know how you guys do it. Too. I mean, Bobby, I admire you. I mean, you learned the language. You can speak it very well. Dami. <laughs> I wish you all the best on that journey. I'm, I'm starting my intensive Swedish class on Monday. 
So I mean, I, I I have been intensive. <laughs> like I have been in and out. Like I'm tired, man. Like you, ha- you, you have you have those people. One of those people have a thick tongue. The tongue is just not moving. It's funny. I'm like, telling you, you like, <laughs> like I I I mean, no. one of the reasons I thank God for being in IT. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, but if I wasn't in IT, trust me, I would have started thinking of moving somewhere else, man, because that, that <laughs> but, language but the is funny a... thing is, your list of co- four countries, there is no country on that list that actually speaks English as English, their You go to exactly. Hungary, you have to speak Hungarian. You go to Germany, it's German. Yeah. They don't joke with their language. Yeah. So I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah. In the Netherlands, they are much more open in terms of my... Um, Speaking integration English. with foreigners yeah mm. so english is much more accepted there i mean mm. granted there are a few places you go to and they'll be like oh it's only dutch and so on and so forth yeah, yeah. but you know yeah but in and, the netherlands if you're thinking in the long run i think part of their requirements for permanent is, residents yeah is that to... you, some language proficiency yes. you know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i was gonna go to that that i think even in sweden yeah, and you about. might survive uh, speaking just English, but if you want to rise in your company, you still would do well to learn Swedish. You can call the shots at some point. You will still need to learn the language. Well, and the also funny thing for about... people that are not in IT, if you're not in yes. IT and you're not in engineering, if you're in social sciences, exactly. in humanities yeah. or whatever, yeah. you have to be prepared to learn the language because you're going to yeah. be interacting with people and you need the language to interact with people. Uh, I agree with you. I was, I was going to say that uh, we have engineering man- managers from Serbia, Macedonia, um, mm. you know, or the extreme parts of Europe. Yeah, they don't speak Swedish, and mm. they are managers, you know. But I guess that's because it's IT, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. It's because it's IT, and if you work in a multinational company, not everybody yeah. will get a chance to work in a multinational work in a company. company. Yeah. yeah. Sure. There's so many small companies in Sweden that you can get a job with, but you need to have the language mm-hmm. yeah. to do that. So, yeah. but um, on the last note, I'll say, do you have one last thing that you want to share with our audience that are maybe planning their exit from from Nigeria or from any other parts of Africa? <laughs> because I know people are always planning exits. It's a shame that it has to be like that, but it is the it, it's what it is. Um, yes. So one parting note to 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 people planning their exit. Um, I, I think you've shared I'm, your wisdom. I think I've so. shared most of it. One last mm. thing, at least for families coming here, please mm. teach your child or your children your language. Mm. Please, <laughs> you will need it here. So because you don't want them to come to another man's country, learn their language, and then they can't even speak their own language. So mm. please. Let that be priority. Yeah. There is no prestige in your children not knowing how to speak Igbo or Yoruba. Or it's Yoruba. actually, there's no prestige in it. Nothing to be saying, you know, my kids, you know, they only speak English. It's not a... No, no. It's, it's not. Yeah. Because, I mean, in Sweden, you speak Swedish. Yeah. 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 Be my, proud my of your heritage. Has, um, friends from other countries and in their... In their homes, they speak their own language. So the Chinese person speaks Chinese in his house. Mm. And then when they're in school, they speak Swedish and they understand mm. English. Yeah. So we, we, we can do the same. That. Yeah. Thank you for that. Seth? Um, if you are thinking of making the move in six months, well, don't wait for six months make that move tomorrow i mean mm-hmm. that would be my partner advice because um there is so mm-hmm. much more out there or uh, as i would say since we are talking about sweden there is so much you can do you know over here there are so many opportunities of course they come with their own set of you know issues and so on and so forth but mm-hmm. there's so much more you can do and um i think it it's it's unfair for anybody to subject themselves to what Nigeria or Africa alone can offer. I mean, so mm. if you are thinking of making that move and if you are like me, we'll put it off for four or five years before eventually doing it. Don't waste any more time. I'm encouraging you. Make it, uh, or rather, make the move while you can. 
I mean, yeah. earlier the better. Yeah. Please don't let the president of Nigeria hear you. Probably I don't, don't care. He can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> he probably wants you to say, please, good to this in, stay in your country and make it better. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> thank that's, you that's so that's much that's for that's sharing. That's yeah, that's go that's ahead. What Seth said. Mm. Um, I mean, like his own story, don't limit yourself to the countries you know. There are so many yeah. countries out there yeah. that have so many... Mm. I mean, mm-hmm. opportunities, you'll be surprised, like, there are Nigerians everywhere, so don't limit yourself to the US, UK, Canada, yeah. Canada. Mm-hmm. you know, there are so yeah. many countries out there, if you're thinking I- of moving, mm-hmm. of jack buying. Yeah. <laughs> and let yeah. me say that if you're afraid of Europe because of the language, it's actually not as hard as it sounds. You can learn a new language. Mm-hmm. You can learn a new culture. I know someone who moved here from Ghana. I know maybe she would hear this particular episode and she will laugh because when she moved and we, she moved and married, she married them. Um, she's married to a friend of mine, and so she moved. We, we we got to meet them, and she was saying, "Oh, I'm planning my exit back to Ghana. I'm planning it in two years. I've told my husband this and that. Today she's speaking the language. She's working at almost the most Swedish company ever." So we always tease her. So what's happening to this exit plan? <laughs> because you can always start again. You can learn a new language. And two yeah. is, um, yeah, I mean, it's doable. It's yes, doable. It is. it is. It's doable. I mean, and don't come here and say you don't want to learn the language either. So You learn it all. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're moving to your husband or to your wife, prepare your mind that you would make the best of the opportunity yes um of what is available here learn mm-hmm. the language even if you're going to exit at some point it's so mm-hmm. good to learn the, while you're living here leave it to the fullest that's yes. what i say enjoy yes. the five years you'll be here the 10 years you'll be here mm-hmm. until maybe the journey takes you somewhere else so, somewhere else yes yeah yes. be open be open when you move yeah. here be open mm-hmm. thank you guys so much um, thank you both for coming and sharing of yourself, your stories, and making me laugh so much on this episode. And I hope that everybody else listening has enjoyed listening to you guys. Thank you so much. And please, thank my you. audience, don't forget to follow Niger Moms Abroad. Thank She's you. always giving tips. And um, so if you're in Nigeria and you're looking to move out of the country, make sure you're following Niger Moms Abroad. Seth, I don't think you have... Do you have any social media handle? No, 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 no. I don't do that. <laughs> and don't forget to also like and subscribe to Intentional Randomness on YouTube, on in, on Instagram. And um, till I come your way next time, <laughs> this is Bobby on Intentional Randomness. See you. Bye. <laughs> I am sure you have enjoyed listening to this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram on our handle Intentional Randomness and feel free to contact us on Intentional Randomness feedback at gmail.com. Until next time, be intentional.